Today's video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. Now, I don't know about you, but I've been pretty busy lately, so I feel like a relaxing video. I think we're going to do a video about the history of the underground, but through benches. So sit yourself down and we'll have a quick rundown of this little considered, but much appreciated, aspect of station design. See, the interesting thing about the underground is that they don't really like to throw stuff away, as you'll know if you've ever been to the museum depot at Acton Town. What that means is that there are some real antiques still in everyday use. The oldest part of the underground is here on the Metropolitan Line, which opened in 1863. Here at Baker Street you can see some Metropolitan Railway benches nested in the ventilation alcoves, which is a very efficient use of space, I'd say. Although, given how smoky and unpleasant the stations were in the 1860s, I doubt people were thinking about lingering very much. Around the surface platforms, there are some of the less space-constrained design of Metropolitan Railway Bench to be seen. But I think I prefer the rather more substantial benches by the Metropolitan Railway's rival, the District Railway. This one at Barons Court dates back to the opening of the station in 1905. The district line tended to go pretty substantial in general. These ones at Turnham Green date back to around 1911. You can see similar ones at Ravenscourt Park. I like the way they provide you with a bit of shelter. You're up on a viaduct here, so I would imagine that was pretty well received on a windy day. Interestingly, you can see a similar design on some of the Northern Line stations. So I think this was a standard design ordered by Underground Electric Railways of London. In the early 20th century they owned both the Hampstead Tube, which became part of the Northern Line, and the District Railway. The eastern end of the Central Line was actually not built as an underground line. It was built by the Eastern Counties Railway, with parts built by their successor, the Great Eastern Railway. So it's no surprise that here at Woodford there are still some Great Eastern Railway benches. Woodford has been substantially rebuilt over the years, but these old touches remain. The station opened in 1856, coming under Great Eastern ownership in 1862. At Hammersmith, they're more about Great Western benches. The Hammersmith and City Line was built as a joint venture between the Great Western Railway and the Metropolitan Railway, and it seems that the GWR took charge of the furniture. Here at Hammersmith, there are two styles of bench. This one is a style that began to be adopted from 1934. And this one is older. How much older, I'm afraid I don't know. The round Art Deco logo is known as Shirt Button, and I know John Betjeman was very contemptuous towards it. I don't know, I think it's quite stylish. There's a much simpler type of Great Western bench in the waiting room here at East Acton. I think it's time to take a short break from talking about taking a break with a word about today's sponsor, Surfshark VPN. Now what I'm thinking is, I'm going to try to get this message done as quickly as possible. I tend to ramble on, I'll admit that. So I think it would be an interesting exercise to see if I can get all the things that are great about Surfshark into, let's say, five seconds. I mean, it's not an easy task. Obviously, I want to talk about Surfshark's advanced encryption, which protects your internet activity from unwanted snooping. That's very important. And I should definitely mention the fact that you can use it to get around region locks, which has all sorts of uses, from finding region-specific deals when online shopping, to watching streaming content from other countries, to getting around government censorship. I should also mention that viewers of this channel can get an 83% discount on a two-year deal with three months extra free by following the link in the description below and entering the code JAGO. I guess I don't have to mention that Surfshark has servers in over a hundred countries, although that is very useful. And while the fact that Surfshark is the only VPN that can be used on unlimited devices is a great advantage, I suppose it's not essential to make that point. I mean, it's going to be a challenge to get all this into five seconds, and that's before I've even mentioned the 30-day money-back guarantee, but here goes. Surfshark VPN is the... Ah! So, we've had Great Eastern and Great Western. Here at Woodside Park and Totteridge and Whetstone on the Northern Line, you can see some Great Northern benches. This station was built by the Edgware, Highgate and London Railway, which was bought out by the Great Northern Railway before it was opened. 
The line to High Barnet was taken over by the underground as part of the Northern Heights plan of the 1930s. The section of the district line from Bromley by Bow to Upminster was built by the London Tilbury and South End Railway. Hence the LTSR monogram that you can see cast into the benches at Plastow and East Ham. The LTSR was bought out by the Midland Railway in 1911, even though it's nowhere near the Midlands, so at Hornchurch and Plastow you can see Midland Railway benches. In 1890 the City and South London Railway opened. This was London's first true tube railway, i.e. one actually built in a tunnel. It was a cramped, minimum space sort of a line. Its stations were typically island platforms. Most of these have been rebuilt, but at Clapham North and Clapham Common the layout is the same as when they were first opened in 1900. Consequently, the benches here are narrow, backless things to serve both platforms. From the 20s onwards, the underground started using a modernist approach to design. That meant that things should be simple, functional and aesthetically pleasing. Here at Collier's Wood you can see how these benches have evolved from the sort of thing we saw at Baker Street. It's a wooden seat, very solid, with the wall as the back. This basic concept seems to have been favoured for quite a while, you can see it on the Victoria line which came 40 years after Collier's Wood. Sudbury Town in its current form dates from 1931. The station was designed by Charles Holden, but these benches were not. Frank Pick, the commercial manager of the underground group, was most displeased by what he saw as sloppy design work. And from then on, Holden's team was in charge of fittings. Various styles of seats started to appear, but perhaps the most pick-pleasing style is this, which can be seen at Arnos Grove and at the Hammersmith District and Piccadilly Line station, among other places. It's a streamlined, back-to-back -back design, making best use of the space available, but it's also a station sign. Neat. Remember I mentioned district railway seats that were built into shelters? Well, in the 1930s, this new variant on that idea appeared. You can see it here at Stamford Brook, and here at Chiswick Park. These days, benches by Hill are favoured by TFL. These are adaptable to locations and come in two basic forms, freestanding and the Centro model, which is affixed to a bar. That being said, the old benches are a long way from retirement. Well, I hope you enjoyed this relaxed tale from the tube. If you did, please do leave a like and consider subscribing for more. I'd like to thank my donors on Ko-fi and Patreon and here on YouTube for your ever-generous support. You are the arms to my chair. Thanks also to Surfshark VPN for their sponsorship, which makes videos like this practical. And I will see you all again very soon for another Tale from the Tube.